I'm Al Michaels, welcoming you to Birmingham. Auburn comes in with a record of 2-0. They've looked very good. The Tigers have very high hopes right now as they open up the SEC race against a team that's really been staggering. Tennessee opening up its season against two Pac-10 foes and losing, and they won 117 minutes without scoring. So Johnny Major certainly hopes today is the time to turn things around. Working with me today, our analyst is the man who quarterbacked the Oklahoma Sooners to national championships in 1974 and 1975, Steve Davis. And Steve, as you talk to the Auburn people, the personnel, the coaches, the players, the fans, they think if they can get by this one, they might be 7-0. and Well, they really do, Al. They've got a good football team, but neither team, uh, Auburn or Tennessee, has been able to put a cohesive game together. They've... Uh, Auburn on one hand they played good offensively one game and then defensively they played one good they've never been able to put it together and then on the other side Tennessee they've struggled offensively and they got to get some things done Auburn against Tennessee 30th meeting between these two rivals from Legion Field in Birmingham we'll be right back after this opener at Knoxville to UCLA then last week two late touchdowns to tie Oregon State 13-13 it is a team that has a lot of offensive weapons, and they hope they can come into play today. They are led by a quarterback by the name of Jimmy Streeter, number six, who took over first string last year with four games remaining, sparked the balls to an impressive finish, and Jimmy Streeter is off to a relatively good start so far this season, though they do expect a bit more from him. He has an array of receivers to choose from, including number 36, his running back, Kelsey Finch, taking the pass here. Kelsey Finch is quite a football player. Uh, Last year, he rushed for 770 yards and eight touchdowns. And so far this year, he's averaging 5.5 yards a carry. Another man he won't have any trouble picking out is the big tight end, number 85, Reggie Harper. And also, when it comes to speed, he'll look to the other side of the field and Jeff Moore, number 88. He's very speedy. They've got good speed in their, all the retrievers, but uh, he's a real game breaker. He can do about everything, a lot of underneath routes, and uh, he knows how to do something with the ball after he catches it. The running game is led by the aforementioned Finch taking the pitch here. Finch, uh, he was a strong, powerful runner. He's probably the faster runner in the backfield, but uh, he's uh, looking for a kind of season he had last year. Through the middle, they use number 24, double X, Frank Fox, the one-two tandem with Finch, and we may also see some freshman in the offensive backfield today for Tennessee as Johnny Majors tries to get something going on offense. So certainly the Vols will have to score more to win. They picked up their two touchdowns as we mentioned very late last week. Defensively though, Majors didn't know what to expect before the season started. He has to be impressed and he certainly hopes he will have the services today of one cornerback by the name of Roland James. Roland James is a great player, a hard hitter and uh, they're very glad to have him back today. He's had a broken thumb and uh, he is so much of a leader in their defensive secondary, a very uh, vicious tackler, and they're glad to see him back today and they're playing this cool weather. If he does indeed play a lot today, it will be with a cast on that thumb. So Tennessee comes in 0-1-1. Auburn comes in 2-0. Victories over Kansas State and Virginia Tech, and they open up SEC play today. And they, like Tennessee, led by a quarterback, as you see their record, a 13-point win over K-State, 11 over Virginia Tech last week. Their quarterback, like Tennessee's, wears number six, Charlie Trotman and basically out of the same mold. He's not very big, but he's a great uh, quarterback in a lot of ways because he run the option well. He's a good leader and very solid performer, good passer, 52% on the uh, passing side of it. And he's just an excellent young player. Here he finds number 82, Byron Franklin, one wide receiver along with number 45, Rusty Bird, the speed merchants who Trotman will look to if the Auburn running game box down. I don't think there's anybody in the country that can have the receivers that have the speed that Auburn does. Both of them are excellent performers. And uh, Rusty Bird, the 4-5 uh, young man, the 40-yard dash, and that's good anywhere. So Trotman has been on the beam in his first two games, and certainly one of the most underrated backs as far as we are concerned in all the country would be this fellow. Number 21, James Brooks, returning a kick here. He may not be a household name outside of Alabama right now, but that may change in a month or so. Certainly will. Last year, he was the frosh, uh, freshman of the year in the uh, Southeastern Conference, and he really got the position by, because of an injury to another running back that we'll see in just a minute. He's uh, making his presence known. He's third in all uh, total purpose running in the country right now at 205 yards. He's very powerful, and uh, he's a runner. You can see right there. And he's young also. James Brooks is only a sophomore and a fellow who might wind up in the top 10 in overall rushing before the year is out. 
Joe Cribbs, his running mate number 20, has been injured so far this season, hasn't seen much action, but certainly could play a key part today. Well, last year is the number three rush in the Southeastern Conference, and of course, he's about 90% strong, and he's back, and uh, they're glad to have him. They've got a tremendous backfield with uh, Cribbs healthy and Brooks healthy. And another man who should be healthy today, who has been hurt, and Auburn has certainly had its share of injuries, would be the man who normally is the blocking back. But here he takes the ball, and you can see what he can do if he finds any daylight whatsoever. William Andrews. So Auburn seems to have enough offensive punch. I think, Steve, it's a question of whether or not Tennessee can muster up some offense. I think Johnny Majors has to be extremely disappointed to this point. Of course, they, they've had awful field position in their first two games. Well, they did, and of course, the problem that has Tennessee has in, encountered all year long, they've just not been able to take advantage of, of the opportunities that they have had. They've not had many. They've had their problems uh, not being able to be cohesive on offense, and uh, the mistakes have hurt them. This will be the 30th meeting between these two schools. Auburn leading overall 16-12-1. and one. Auburn and Tennessee will be right back. American. And even though this game is not being played in Auburn, certainly in the state of Alabama, you know where the partisanship will be lying today. Most of the fans, either from Auburn, graduates of Auburn, or partisans to any football team from the state of Alabama. Auburn, 16 wins in the series. Tennessee has won 12 times. There's been one tie and a lot of close games over the past several years. Last year, as you can see, it was Auburn coming from behind to win by two. So stay with us for the meeting between Tennessee and Auburn as the Tennessee Volunteers get set to come out onto the field. Auburn has already made its appearance, and here they are, Johnny Major's group from Knoxville for their first win of the season. The Auburn-Tennessee game, moments away, will return after a word from our local stations. Sunday, the Hardy Boys return. In my business, I check out anything that bothers me. With a menacing... CAA College Football from Legion Field in Birmingham, Alabama. The Volunteers of Tennessee sparked by their talented quarterback, Jimmy Streeter, and the Auburn Tigers with the exciting running back, James Brooks. This ABC Sports exclusive is brought to you by the folks at Chevrolet who invite you to come on into your Chevy dealers coast to coast for a look at an all-star lineup of cars. By the Miller Brewing Company, brewers of Miller High Life. If you've got the time, we've got the beer. And by Sylvania, the makers of Sylvania Superset Color TV and a complete line of television and audio products for your home. There's a Sylvania set that's just right for you. Pleasant, cool, relatively breezy day. Legion Field, Birmingham, Alabama. 30th meeting coming up. Great rivals, Tennessee and Auburn, opening up their SEC season. Welcome back to Legion Field. Al Michaels with former Oklahoma quarterback Steve Davis. I've got to wonder about one thing. Johnny Majors left Pittsburgh. He had Tony Dorsett there. He had a national championship team, as you look at the coach of the Volunteers. Last year, a tough year. This year may be another one. I think... Uh, I wonder if Johnny's having any second thoughts. Oh, I don't know if he is. He, he played football at Tennessee. He's glad to be back home. He said the people are treating him just great. And, you know, he's a winning football coach. And it's going to take him time to get his kids that he recruits uh, into those junior and senior slots. And I think he's going to do everything he wants to do in time. The general feeling is that he has had a couple of great recruiting years back to back and that in another year or two, Tennessee will be extremely tough. Auburn coached by Doug Barfield, a pleasant enough man, a man who said the right things all week long. Nobody has given the other fella any ammunition to get their teams fired up this week. Well, he's got to be pleased, and he's uh, kind of a quiet guy, but he shoots from the hip, and he tells you just what he thinks. He thinks he's got a good football team. They think they can go a long way before they get beat, and, of course, their toughest encounters right here today with Tennessee. The captains meeting with the referee at midfield, and let's pick up that conversation. What'd you call? Hedgy is called. It is tails, as you can see. You have won the toss. You may kick. You want to receive. You'll defend that goal. Put your backs to your goal, please. R.P. Williams, the referee. 
letting us know that Auburn has won the toss. The Tigers will receive, the balls will kick off, and we'll be teeing it up at Legion Field in Birmingham, Alabama, Tennessee against Auburn in just a moment. And the question is, with Tennessee kicking off, whether Alan Duncan, the kickoff man for the Volunteers, will go that way, or whether he will keep it away from Brooks. So ready to go. Tennessee looking for his first win. Auburn tries to stay unbeaten. Good kick by Duncan through the end zone. And so Brooks has no opportunity to run it out. He will set up in the offensive backfield as Auburn takes over first down and 10 at their own 20-yard line. Charlie Trutman is the quarterback with Brooks and Andrews, the running backs. Andrews used mainly for blocking. The wide receivers, Bird and Franklin with Dick Haley at tight end. He alternates. He is the son of the Auburn athletic director, by the way. And the offensive line, anchored by the right tackle, a fine one, number 70, Mike Burrow. So it's first and 10 from the 20. Flag down immediately. And coming back the other way is Byron Franklin, who gets it out to the 30-yard line, stopped by Greg Gaines, but a marker down immediately. Illegal procedure with the right guard, as Steve mentioned. Pulling out too soon on the first play. So signaled by the referee, R.P. Williams. And you'll see it again as you watch number 64, the right guard. So instead of a first down or close, it is first down and 15. Brooks through the middle. Out to the 20-yard line. So back to the original line of scrimmage. Brad White, number 90, made the stop for Tennessee. And the defense for the Volunteers. Davis, Chavis, Noonan in the middle, number 60, was injured in practice this week. White and Wolf. Noonan not in there at the moment. There's the secondary, the linebackers, good ones. Bolton and Kuki. Lee North. In now on defense for the Volunteers, with Trotman keeping and getting out to the 23-yard line. Lee North, number 73, makes the tackle. So it'll be third down and 70. As you look at Trotman through the first two games, a bit over 50%. Chavis has moved into Noonan's spot. We mentioned number 60, the nose guard, who leads Tennessee defensively in tackle. Hurt Wednesday in practice and doubtful today. Third down, seven from the 23. Trotman under pressure. He'll keep and then slips as he tries to cut back at the 25-yard line. Craig Pookie, number 44, fell on him there. And so the punting unit comes in. The Tigers will have to kick it away. Robert Malone drops back deep for Tennessee. Skip Johnston to do the kicking for Auburn. There is Malone, number one. Johnston, the punter, averaging 36.7 on 14 kicks so far this season. Good one. Malone has to back up to the 26-yard line. Tries to get a block and can't. And out to the 31 he comes. So first down, Tennessee from the 31-yard line. The Volunteers taking over there. With Jimmy Streeter, the quarterback. Finch and Fox are the running backs. Finch, 36. And Fox, 24, the split backs. The fake to Fox. Pass over the middle is complete to the 46-yard line to the tight end, Reggie Harper. One of the men we highlighted in our discussion in the pregame show. And perhaps the favorite target of Streeter. So Majors comes out throwing. First down, Streeter the quarterback. Finch and Fox are the running backs. And as you look at the receivers, the man at the bottom caught the last pass. 
Garbo is the wing back, Moore the split end. Streeter on the pitch back. And Kelsey Finch dropped just about at the line of scrimmage by Alan Harden, good cornerback, number 49. And Harden is shaken up on the play, and a very key man for Auburn. It's his wrist as Harden needs assistance coming off the field. We'll see it again. Jerry Beasley comes in to replace Harden. It is second down and 10. Tennessee from the Volunteer 46. Streeter improvises and gets into Auburn territory. Marshall Riley made the stop number 74. So Streeter on a straight drop back. Took a look, the receivers were covered, and that's what Jimmy does so well. He can move out and pick up yardage. You look at the offensive line, Robert Shaw, the center, all SEC, anchors it. It is third down, five, no score. Early first quarter, Tennessee at the Auburn 48-yard line. Streeter coming this way. Stops and throws over the middle and nearly intercepted. It's incomplete at the 38-yard line. Donnie Givens nearly picked it off. The pass intended for Jeff Moore, number 88. So Auburn able to stop the drive, and Donnie Givens having a little trouble coming off the field. The man who almost picked it off. So Dale Schneitman comes in to do the punting for Tennessee. And back deep is Joe Cribb, number 20, who was hurt prior to the season. Missed the first game. Played sparingly last week. Crowd is responding. Freddie Smith is in on special teams. We'll talk about him a bit later. The great Auburn linebacker. And the kick goes into the end zone. And so Auburn will take over again at the 20-yard line after the touchback. So neither team able to generate anything of substance offensively on their first series. And Auburn will take over again at its 20-yard line. So the Tigers will start from there. We are four minutes into the game. It's Auburn nothing and Tennessee nothing. 11 minutes and 7 seconds remaining first quarter. Legion Field, Birmingham. No score. Auburn with Charlie Trotman at the controls. First down, 10 from the 20-yard line. Out of the eye. The up back is Andrews. The deep back is Brooks, and it's Brooks to the left side. Turning it on. The 30, the 35. Brooks down the sideline and run out at the 47-yard line. Greg Gaines made the stop, and the great acceleration in evidence on the replay here. Watch him isolate it. This will show you why he's the number three all-purpose back in the country right now. He's got tremendous speed. He breaks to the outside, and he's going to sideline. Uh, you, know, you need to take a lesson in ballet to do this. And he stretches it out and just loses his balance and goes out. No one makes a tackle on him yet. He's still running. <laughs> they say he stepped out at the 39-yard line of Auburn, a gain of 19. First and 10. They give it to him again. Out to the 42, picks up three, maybe four. Craig Kuki makes the stop. Coming into the game, Brooks is averaging six yards a carry. He's picked up 313 net. There's Kuki from Seattle, Washington. Number 44, good linebacker. Hurt last year early, didn't play after that. Off to a fine start in 78. Brooks has now carried the ball three times for 28 yards. It is second down and six. Andrews. Tough man to bring down. Gets to the 49. He's close to the first down. Johnny Chavis made the tackle. This program is being brought to you as a special exclusive of ABC Sports. Let's pause five seconds to allow our local stations to identify themselves. WKAB TV 32, Montgomery, Alabama. They'll bring in the chains as Andrews was able to work it out close to the 49, and he is shy by about two inches. So Doug Barfield on the headset. 
Talking with the coaches upstairs. The play comes in, third and in inches. And they line up with split backs this time. It's cut and keeps and works his way for a first down into Tennessee territory. Isolate on the nose guard number 46, Chavis. Here's J John Chavis, and he was a walk-on, earned his scholarship. He's got to take on the uh, Mark Clement, the center, and uh, he guesses wrong and goes to the other side. You've got to do that. It's short yardage situation. You know the quarterback's probably going to jump in the gap, and uh, you're lucky sometimes, and sometimes you're not. And again, keep in mind, Chavis playing, in essence, out of position today because of the injury to Noonan on first down. It's Tuckman rolling, fluffing, keeping, and tackled at the 42-yard line. Charlie Trotman, out of Montgomery, a junior. He's only 5'11", 174 pounder. Mike Burrow led the way. And Roland James in the lineup playing with the cast on the thumb. He broke it in the UCLA game. Made the tackle. There is James, number 14. And you can see it wrapped up. Pretty well secured and wrapped. Probably more uh, burden of, uh, a burden for him than anything else, but he gets to play. Won't help you intercept any, I know that. <laughs> Second down and two. Brooks. Slid off one tackle and should have enough for the first down. Gets to the 38. Craig Pookie, the linebacker, six feet even, 220 pounder, number 44 for Tennessee. Made the tackle and a first down for Auburn. So the Tigers on their second possession started this drive at their own 20-yard line. Brooks ran it out to the 39, and they have moved it now to the 38 as you look at Johnny Majors facing the ball sideline. Concern? Already. No score. Eight and a half minutes to go. First quarter on first down. The give to the fullback Ed Dubos, number 38, in in place of Andrews on this series. And he picks up close to five with Chris Bolton, 61, the linebacker making the tackle. Second down, five. Auburn at the Tennessee 33. Dubos picks up three, maybe four, and Lee North, number 73, making the stop. So Dubose has carried twice for almost nine. It is third and a long yard. Charlie Trutman has kept the ball four times, picked up 15. Leotis Burton comes in defensively for Tennessee on a third and short yardage situation. Number 74. Brooks is the man. And Brooks fights his way inside the 28 and very close to the first down. So as you can see, Doug Barfield can use Brooks in several ways to run back kicks. He can catch passes. He can go outside and inside as he does here first down. And get the first down. They've got a pretty good stock of running backs with Krebs and Brooks and DuBose and Andrews. Uh, they're very healthy in the, in the backfield. If they keep them all healthy throughout the season, they're going to be tough to contend with. They have had a lot of injuries, but they will get no sympathy at all from Tennessee because Majors has certainly had his share, too. First and ten. Auburn at the Tennessee 27. Brooks. Cuts back. Spins. Gets down to the 23. Roland James makes the stop. You can tell immediately he is not the type of man you're going to bring down one against one. No, the thing is about him, he does equally well inside or outside. He likes to run inside. The coaches like to see him run it inside, but uh, he's got the speed and the ability to break and do something outside. Very versatile running back, and that's why he's good. Last year, he and Cribs split time. Otherwise, Brooks' stats would have been even more impressive. Second down, six. Fumble at the 22-yard line. And at the bottom of the pile, it's an Auburn man, Trotman, able to recover himself. So Charlie lost the handle, but maintains possession. And as a matter of fact, picks up a yard. It'll be third and five. Here it is again. Sometimes a quarterback has a tendency to step out a little bit before he gets the football. The first thing a quarterback's got to do is secure the ball and then go somewhere. And sometimes we have a tendency uh, to be a little quick-footed and thinking, I've got to do something down the line. And you fumble. Joe Cribbs comes in to replace Brooks. 
Buckman rolling left under pressure. He'll keep. He's got the first down at the 14-yard line. Charlie Trotman got to the outside quickly, and Joe Cribb, in for his first play of the game, made the block to spring in. Junior Reed made the tackle. We isolate on Franklin. He was open. Franklin's going down there looking for him. Charlie's moving around looking. He just a quick curl in. He realizes he's got to make the run. It's a great block. William Andrews that keyed, uh, that gave uh, Charlie a chance to break outside and uh, get some yardage. Trotman has now carried seven times for 23 yards. We have 5-10 to play. First quarter, no score. Auburn threatening. First and 10 from the 15-yard line. The big fullback through the middle, William Andrews from Thomasville, Georgia. Andrews, six feet even. They list him at 200 pounds. Took a look at him in practice yesterday. I don't think he's 200 pounds. He's ever been at 200. <laughs> they call him the Juice. And I guess the reason is number 32 on his back. O.J. Andrews is having a better year than O.J. is at this point. <laughs> it is second down and five at the 10. Trotman pitching. Cribb gets three. Down to the seven, Dennis Wolf, number 34, sliding out from the right end spot to make the tackle. Wolf from Gate City, Virginia. The problem now running the option play to the short side of the field is not only does the defense have an advantage, but also the sideline is just like the 12th man because you run out of room, you got to pitch the ball, make the decision, and that's what caused the play not to get the yards that they wanted. They got three. It is third and two at the seven. Out of the power eye now with Brooks and Krebs in the backfield together. And it is Krebs has the first down at the one yard line. Joe Krebs slicing over the left side. The monster man for Tennessee, 27, Greg Gaines stopped him. Saved the touchdown at least temporarily. But Auburn trying to culminate what would be an 80 yard drive. They started at their own 20, it is first and goal. Krebs was a starter last year, but he got hurt in the first day of practice in short. And uh, there's a concern, Johnny Majors. So again, both Cribs and Brooks with Andrews in the backfield together. And Putman keeps and goes in. Auburn takes the lead. Charlie Trotman right over the center. Mark Clement. And in for the touchdown. So they move 80 methodically and lead 6 zip. Everybody stacked in. Mark Clemens does a great job with the middle linebacker that uh, Pukey was uh, standing right there. And uh, Mark Clement really cleared the way, standing at the linebacker and letting uh, Trotman just kind of fall in. Foster Christie will hold George Portella to attempt the extra point. He's been perfect thus far this season. He's made six out of six. And add one more, seven out of seven. And seven points up on the board for Auburn. So 3.33 to go. First quarter in Birmingham. It's the Tigers seven, the Volunteers nothing. Three. 433, Robert Malone won. Back to receive for Tennessee. So the Tigers trying to stay unbeaten on top by a touchdown. Portella's kick coming down to Moore at the nine. Back to the 20. Good coverage, and it's Danny Skutak, a man who shows no fear for Auburn. Number 72, here he comes in off the field, a fellow who figures on more than half of the tackles on the kickoffs. The Tigers, defensively, up front with Hardy, Bellamy, Riley, Warren, and Wood. And the secondary, the linebackers, Givens and Rayburn, and the secondary, Clifford Tony, number 29, has been a stalwart defensively to this point in 78. On first down, moving to the outside is Kelsey Finch, and it's Clifford Tony. Number 29, the sophomore from Huntsville, making another tackle. He has figured prominently defensively for Auburn against Kansas State and Virginia Tech the last two weeks. Tennessee really has to be careful because they don't want to turn the ball over. They're down now, and they're down deep. They haven't had good field position all year. They've got to watch themselves and not try to do too much. They have started fully 80% of their drives inside their own 20-yard line. Second down. Streeter, hit back of the line of scrimmage. Rodney Bellamy, number 90. Zach Hardy, 93. In on the stop. 
Hardy from Ueytown, Alabama, home of the Allison brothers. NASCAR fame. It'll be third down and 11, loss of one. Jimmy Streeter, his figures against UCLA and Oregon State. Third and 11. Draw doesn't fool anybody. Double X, Frank Fox gets hit immediately. Frank Warren, 66, leading the charge of the very fired up Auburn defense. So Auburn will give it right back to the offensive unit after they have moved 80 yards. Tennessee can't get the first down, and Dale Snyderman has to come in to kick. Joe Cribbs, number 20, drops back deep for Auburn, standing at his own 40-yard line. Less than two minutes to go in the quarter. Low kick, take a good Tennessee bounce, and he'll pick up some extra yardage here as it's down at the 34-yard line. So back come the Tigers on offense, starting from the 34. A minute 40 to go in the first. It's seven to nothing, Tigers. From the, the breakdown. 40 to go, first quarter at Legion Field in Birmingham. Auburn leads Tennessee seven nothing. It's first down. Auburn. This drive starting from the Tigers 36. Charlie Trotman, the quarterback, number six. The fake to Brooks. Protection starts to break down. He improvises once more and turns it into a two-yard gain out to the 38-yard line where Johnny Chavis made the stop. Charlie Trotman, not a big man, sort of reminds you of a fellow they had at Oklahoma uh, you in know, the I, early 70s, but the name is Steve Davis. <laughs> I stood up next to him yesterday, and they say he's 5'11", but I thought I was 5'11". I don't you know. He's, a, he's small, but he's a very versatile athlete, very good. Quick, too. Second down, eight from the 38. Brooks. Andrews couldn't lay down the block, and as a consequence, Dennis Wolf made the tackle number 34. Andrews tried to take Wolf out of the play, but Denny was able to slide off and stop Brooks going to the left side. It'll be third down, seven. A reminder, coming up Monday night, good matchup. The Dallas Cowboys and the Washington Redskins, undefeated this season, 4-0. Dallas coming in 3-1. Tony Dorsett and company on ABC's Monday Night Football, 9 o'clock Eastern. Third down, seven. 25 seconds to go in the first quarter. The reverse, coming back the other way, is Byron Franklin to the 42-yard line. And again, it's Denny Wolf making the tackle, so the Volunteers able to hold. And that will be the final play of the quarter. The clock will run out. We've got Franklin isolated. He'll start, go forward, and then backward. It's a reverse play. It's a good call, but Tennessee had it pretty well snuffed out. Everybody's there, and they stayed at home. A lot of times you get flow, and uh, no one stays at home, and you get the play to work. That time it didn't. Tennessee has just called the timeout. Johnny Majors would rather have Auburn kick this way, going left to right, than the other way, to have time elapse in the first quarter. So they have stopped the clock with 10 seconds to go in the quarter. Update you now. Georgia Tech, Pepper Rogers trying to get things together. Leading seven to nothing over the Citadel in the first. Clemson out in front of Villanova by three touchdowns in the second. Virginia out in front of VMI early by a field goal. Keep you updated throughout the day. Back deep is Malone for Tennessee, number 10. And to do the kicking, Skip Johnston, his second punt for Auburn. Good one. Malone angles toward the sideline, gets by one man, and then is dropped at the 18-yard line as time runs out. So the Volunteers, unable to get anything going in the first quarter, will try it in the second. Time has run out in the first after one at Birmingham, 7-0, Auburn leading Tennessee. Hey, Mr. Goodwrench. Two of the approximately 50,000 fans at Legion Field today on a pleasant day. It's first and 10, Tennessee, starting from their own 19-yard line. 7-0 Auburn as we start the second quarter. And Streeter gives the ball to Hubert Simpson, who finds no room whatsoever. Number 32, his first carry. 
And Auburn really charged up defensively. Zach Hardy leading the thrust that time. No gain, second and ten. Now I've been in these situations. There's the first quarter statistics. Of course, Auburn has really been able to hang on to the football a long time, 11 minutes, and that's a lot of football. And then, of course, the uh, yardage, we have, can't say a whole lot about that right now. 98 total for Auburn. Tennessee picking up just one first down in the first quarter. On second and 10, finding some room through the middle is Simpson this time, out to the 35-yard line for a first down. Hubert Simpson, number 32, so Johnny Majors, already making some changes in his offensive backfield. We're going to isolate right now on number 31. There is one of the best linebackers in the Southeastern Conference, Smith of Auburn. He just really uh, got blocked down, and uh, even the best get blocked down occasionally. We'll see him later on slobber knock somebody. <laughs> Seeing his first action of the season, had surgery in June. On first down, Streeter fakes. Throws over the middle. Good pass to the 45 to the tight end, Reggie Harper. Mike McQuaig made the tackle very close to a first down. Streeter throwing the football. It's across the middle to Harper, and uh, this is what they like to do. He threads the needle right between two defenders for Auburn. Good pass. Good catch. He was a freshman All-American. Very good credentials on Mr. Harper. You can see by the chains, less than a yard to pick up the first on second and inches from the 44-yard line. And Streeter will do it himself and pick up four or five. Near midfield, McQuaid makes the stop. And so on this drive, Tennessee trying to put something together has picked up back-to-back -back first downs. Johnny Majors had his problems last year. Staggering start thus far this season. But Johnny's confident. He thinks he has the young players and that in a year or two, the Vols will be right up there again. Bring back the glory to Tennessee. Been a while now. First and 10 from the 49-yard line. Streeter gets two and into Auburn territory. Zach Hardy, 93, turned him in along with Mike McQuaig, 52. Second down and eight. Great football tradition, of course, in Tennessee. Some lean years of late, but Majors came back. Johnny returned home after stints at Iowa State and Pittsburgh and thinks it's just a matter of a very short time. Well, it's a matter of time, and uh, of course, if they can have a big play right here, they might uh, shorten it out a little bit. They want something. Got to have something happen for them. Malone is in motion, and Streeter picked over the middle is incomplete, intended for number 88. Jeff Moore, 6'2", 197-pound senior from Memphis, Tennessee. Jeff Gray covered. Zach Hardy put the pressure on Streeter that time. 12-13 to go in the half. Third down, eight. Streeter has now completed two of four for 26 yards. Watch the tight end this time. Third and eight. Malone in motion. Streeter looks for it more. Ooh. Then dumps it off and is lucky that it wasn't intercepted. Charles Wood, 48, put the pressure on. That is a no-no in the quarterback. When you are under pressure, you don't have an open receiver. You've got to be careful and keep that football. And go down. He was trying to throw it left-handed. Just go down with it. Don't, you know, let's kick it and... Set them back and do something else later. Alan Harden was the man who nearly picked it off. Dale Schneidman is in the kick for Tennessee from midfield. Cribs is back deep. Calls for the fair catch. Makes it at the 14-yard line. Tigers will take over there. It'll be first and 10 Auburn with 11.58 to go in the second quarter at Legion Field. It's still Auburn 7, Tennessee nothing. A lot of cars. Auburn has it at... The 15-yard line, first and 10. They lead 7 to nothing early in the second quarter, and the big fullback going through the middle. DuBose, number 38, gets five. Lee Otis Burton, freshman from America's Georgia, 6'6", 229-pound freshman. Al, the defense consistently over the last two football games has done a very good job of... Uh, uh, at times, bailing the offense out of trouble. They've been the surprise. They've thought all along the time that the offense would be good, but it's been the defense, and they need to keep Auburn settled back. Second down and four. 
Going deep for Franklin. And out of bounds at the 30-yard line. Byron Franklin. Peter's man, Junior Reed. Down the near side. And you can't protect solely against the run with Auburn because Trotman will do just that. They've got too much speed in both Byron Franklin, 82, and Rusty Bird. I tell you, Charlie Trotman just dropped back, and I don't care how little he is, he threw that football a long ways, right on the money. Byron Franklin, big play. And he rolled against the grain, too. Even more impressive. On first down, DuBose. Gain of two, maybe three. Dennis Wolf, 34. In on the stop. Call it a pickup of two. Second down and eight. Auburn at the Tennessee 29. 10.50 to go in the half. Seven nothing. Tigers. Crip. Out of bounds at the 17. Another first down. William Andrews, the great blocking back, laid one down that time as Junior Reed rode him out of bounds. Here it is again. Here's Cribs, and it's amazing, the Auburn's versatility, the run and throw the ball. He uses his speed. I think he's getting healthy. He jumped out and kind of did a doodad on a guy, defensive back. I don't know what you call that. What do you call that move like that? Huh? Just a doodad? Give it, take it away. <laughs> Didn't do a tap dance, nope. First and 10 at the 16-yard line. Through the middle. Andrews, flag down. Only the second penalty of the game. Johnny Chavis made the tackle. We had illegal procedure against Auburn on the first offensive play of the first quarter, and this time it's holding against the Tigers. That's so a much, signified. much needed break for Tennessee defense. Auburn is charging right at them. They're not holding back anything. Doug Barfield said that uh, if he could get both the offense and the defense playing well and put the two previous games together, they would be tough and uh, might get to that 7-0 or 8-0 that they're hoping for. That's right. You look at their schedule. They have not played in Auburn yet. They will do that next Saturday against Miami. Then they go to Vanderbilt. Then come back again against Georgia Tech and Wake Forest. So you look at the schedule. They get by today's game. They could very well be 7-0. It is first down and 24 after the holding call. Trotman. Inside the 25 and upended at the 23-yard line. Number 50, Danny Spradlin, was the man who let him know about his presence at the <laughs> 23. Charlie, the, he's a, a just a good scrambling quarterback. He can run and throw the football, so we won't have a chance to see it, but uh, he does a lot of things very well. Technical throw problem run. right now, just temporarily, with our slow-mo. Get it back working shortly. There it is. He gets, uh, he gets uh, flipped pretty good. <laughs> it is second down and 18. Trotman comes the other way, dumps it off for Brooks. Gets a block and down to the 11. William Andrews again laid down the block. Lee North caught up with Brooks at the 11-yard line. Johnny Majors. <laughs> Looking on a bit anxiously at the moment. His team trails by seven. Auburn is driving again. It is third down and six at the Tennessee 11. Mark Robbins in the game. Wide to the right. Cribs gets tripped up at the 10 and falls forward down to the eight. So it'll be fourth down. The crowd already wants the Tigers to go for it. Danny Spradlin made the stop, but they will send in the field goal unit. So George Portella and company. That's a smart move. Entrance. That's a smart move because they've got a 7 nothing lead and they've got, they're right in front of the goal post and uh, 10 points is better than no points. Making it 10-0 if they can get the field goal. And one of the finest kickers, not only in the conference, but in the country, George Portella. A 25-yard attempt. They'll spot it down at the 15. And the kick is perfect. Portella puts three more on the board. Nine minutes even remaining. First half at Birmingham. It's now Auburn 10 and Tennessee nothing. Uh, 
to see the fine freshman running back, James Berry, in there for Tennessee. And he's in right now, number 39, along with Hubert Simpson, number 32, a sophomore. First and 10 from the 27. We look at Berry, his first carry, and that's nothing. Freshman from Natchez, Mississippi, very high on him, 5'10", 184. Mike McQuaig, 52, made the tackle. He's been in on several stops. Auburn has moved 80 yards for a touchdown and 77, as you see there, on nine plays and 215 for a field goal. 10-0 Tigers. Midway through the second quarter. It is second and nine. Hits back to the freshman Berry. Gets outside and out to the 34-yard line. Streeter took a pop on that play. That's what happens on the option play. You're going to get hit, but it's a well-executed. He makes the right pitch and the right decision. It's kind of a counter option and a quick pitch. You get a hard rush there by the end, and James Berry makes the play. Had they had one block in the corner, he'd been on the sideline. It's tough on a quarterback. You've got to take that blow to make it a successful play. Third down and three from the 34. The surgery, the blood clot, the complications back in the lineup. He doesn't let anything slow him down. He is a great football player, and he was coming from the linebacker position. Usually you worry about a defensive end or, or a halfback. Dale Schneidman, his fourth kick of the game. Joe Cribbs, the single safety. He calls for the fair catch, makes it at the 19-yard line. So the defense holds. Auburn takes over again. Charlie Trotman. Leading out the offensive unit with 7-10 to go in the half. It's 10-0, Tigers. And a loss into a game. United States Gymnastics World Team Trial. The other part of Wide World today was supposed to have been the race from England, the Silverstone 150. That has been rained out. Instead, you'll see an event you've enjoyed before. Pool champion trick shot wizardry featuring Willie Moscone and Minnesota Fats on Wide World of Sports today. First and 10, Auburn as Brooks tries to move outside, comes back the other way. He may yet turn a loss into a game, and then some, the 30, the 40, into Tennessee territory. That man is the most underrated back in maybe the country, and stopped finally at the 10-yard line after a spectacular run. He starts to his right, but he realizes there's nothing over there. And he's pointing out to his different people where the blocks are, and he makes a lot of things happen by himself. Cuts back against the grain. He gets some blocks from Mark Clement, and uh, Clark Duncan's going to run him down, and that shows you why he's a great running back. Man, I tell you, he ran about 100 yards to get uh, however many yards he ran on that. He's now carried nine times for 121 yards. And they are high on that young sophomore. That's the reason why. James Brooks, a 71-yard run. And timeout called by Auburn. Uh, first and goal upcoming. A reminder that the American and National League Championship Series coming your way all next week on ABC beginning Tuesday. Game one of the American League, and then the National League starts on Wednesday from either Philadelphia or Pittsburgh. That has yet to be decided. On Tuesday, we know they'll be in Kansas City. Whether it will be the Red Sox or the Yankees, that has yet to be decided. Live, 8 Eastern time, starting Tuesday night on ABC. James Brooks, my man, you have impressed me. Yes, he has. He's ever bit of what they said he was, and uh, a little bit more this afternoon. First and goal. Trotman asks for quiet and gets it from the friendly crowd. And then gives it to Chris, who carries to the seven. Gets two. Danny Spratlin in on the stop. So second and goal now. You got to realize.
realize, too, that James Brooks was actually a second teamer behind uh, Joe Cribbs. And uh, now it's a little bit of reverse. Cribbs has got to beat out Brooks. What a pleasant uh, opportunity for Doug Barfield to have. Mm -hmm. Those two guys competing. It is second down. They give it to Cribbs. And he gets two more to the five. So third goal is again Tennessee gets tough in close. They were able to stop the Tigers on the last drive and Auburn had to settle for the field goal. And the crowd responds because Brooks after the rest, the 71 yard run, they took him off to the sidelines for two plays, comes back in. Third down goal. Both Cribs and Brooks in the backfield together. Third and goal. The fake to Cribs. The pitch back to Brooks. James looking for room, but settles for two. Gets to the three. Dennis Wolf made the tackle. So it's fourth and goal. And again, it's the field goal unit coming on. So Portello will try to add three more as Tennessee stiffens. Yeah, talking to Coach Barfield, you get the impression that he would do this if you know if we had been told yesterday. If this situation you would have probably predicted that he would go for the field goal go for the safe points you're two and oh go for those points and put them on the scoreboard it's early in the ball game george portella thus far this season has kicked four out of five this one at an angle a 20-yard attempt christie the holder the kick is up the kick is good three more for george three more for the tigers and four 46 to go in the first half at Legion Field in Birmingham, with Auburn now leading Tennessee 13 to nothing. Coming your way tomorrow on ABC. Highlights of today's key contests on College Football 78. You see the lineup. You'll see highlights of the game down the road. The Bear trying to get back on the beam against Vanderbilt. Arkansas, Tulsa, Kentucky against Maryland among those games to be covered on College Football 78. Check your local listings for the time in your area. Al Michaels and Steve Davis in Birmingham. It's been all Auburn so far. You see Malone dropping back deep along with Gary Moore for Tennessee. And Portella to kick off for Auburn. Two yards in. <laughs> Think second, about it. Yeah. <laughs> Gary Moore said, no, 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 no. <laughs> he said, you really don't want to do that. Because <laughs> one thing, they want all the field position they can muster because Auburn is playing very inspired defense and mainly because of Freddie Smith and what he does to the crowd. And it's tough for a quarterback or an offensive team to come out on the field when the home team or at least the Auburn fans are yelling to the top of their lungs. It's a little bit frustrating when you look and see 80 yards to go. There's the scoring drive. Five plays, 70 yards, a minute 58. Didn't take him long, did it? The yardage, of course, is good measure. Picked up on the one run by Brooks. First and 10 from the 20-yard line. Kelsey Pink. Minimal game. Zach Hardy and Frank Warren made the tackle. They have Finch and Fox back in now after going with Berry and Simpson as they're running backs on the last series. Johnny Majors uh, wants to bring those younger kids that are very talented and more speedy than the guys that are starting right now, uh, Finch and Fox. But uh, you've got to bring them around a little slow, and that's there's Johnny Majors thinking, how slow do I have to bring them around? Hmm. Probably. Second down and 10 from the 20. Long count by Streeter. Straight drop. Fires out intended for Arbo. Incomplete. Zach Hardy put the pressure on Streeter that time. Doing a good job, number 93, on Auburn. Jimmy Streeter is very important. Uh, they cannot afford to lose him in a football game because they haven't got another quarterback that has taken a snap in the football game. And he is the uh, cog in the wheel. And he's vital to their offense. Third and ten. Streeter, two out of six for 26 yards through the air. Arbo in motion. Streeter, the fake draw. And throws over the middle. Intercepted at the 27-yard line. And down to the 18 goes Donnie Gibbons, number 76, the linebacker. And a man down for Tennessee. Oh, and Streeter at the six. There he is. Uh-oh. Got a lot of problems out on the field. Oh, man. 
We yeah. also have a flag down. It's a combination of things. There is a marker down at the 12-yard line. And the call goes against Tennessee on sportsmanlike conduct. What happened, Jimmy Streeter, the quarterback, number six, was uh, at least in the mind of one of the Tennessee players, one of his teammates, he was hit late, put down on the turf. And the uh, penalty came when that player, and we don't need to identify him, went to the referee and uh, kind of put his hands on the shoulder. <laughs> I did that one time, and uh, I asked the referee after I got hit late, I said, what are you going to do about it? He said, give me 15 yards, and that's what just happened then. Of course, they'll just penalize half the distance. A little bit of aggression. Oh, boy. So the call against the Vols pounding their problems right now. Auburn trying to blow Tennessee away, leading 13-0, first and goal. 3.56 to go in the half. Trotman asks for some quiet. And then it's number 32 carrying off the right side, William Andrews for a yard. In all that confusion, we really didn't give very much credit to uh, Donnie Givens, who picked off that pass and gave Auburn the football. Tennessee has Jim Noonan in the game, number 60, their very fine nose guard who did not start because he was hurt Wednesday, but in the lineup at present. It is second down goal from the nine. Trotman had nobody to give it to him, turns a busted play into a gain of a yard or two. The Yankees out in front of Cleveland after one, five to nothing. So the Yankees trying to do it themselves, no matter what happens to Boston. That's quite a race up there. I tell you, it's going to be interesting to see who wins that one. Red Sox need a break, and they're running out of time. Yankees lead by a game with two to play for each. Third down, goal. Clock winding down, 250 to go in the first half. Trotman looking incomplete. Number 45, unable to hold on to it, Rusty Bird. Roland James was with him. And again, it's Portola, whose leg is very warm right now. George has been trotting in and out, kicking field goals through the second quarter. He'll get a chance for his third right now. Tennessee has to be very thankful that Doug Barfield is conservative because they've had plenty of opportunities to go for that fourth down and make something of it. At an angle again, this time a 25-yard attempt. Christie to hold. And George remains perfect. George Portella, the junior from Miami, Florida, has kicked three field goals this quarter. 2.40 to play in the half. Auburn now leads 16 to nothing. The Goodyear team. Malone and Moore, the deep end for Tennessee. Malone from the goal line. Slides in back of Moore, who puts down a block. And then Malone goes down hard out of bounds at the 25-yard line. Charlie Thomas led the charge for Auburn. So the Vols take over at their own 25-yard line. And David Rudder, number eight, has come in at quarterback for Tennessee. Hmm. This is interesting right here. He has not taken a varsity snap. This would be his first. Number eight, David Rudder. Finch and Fox are the running backs. And no room at all for Frank Fox. As you look at Streeter, number six. He took a pretty good lick from the back, and his head might have popped on the turf. We don't want to speculate, but it looked like he, he did lay down just for a few casual moments. The quarterback, Rudder, was a walk-on. Earned a scholarship. Second down, 10, 25-yard line. Finch gets about five. Out of bounds at the 30. We'll update you now on what's happening in the area. Tech now leading by two touchdowns over the Citadel in the second quarter. Clemson still leading 21-0 over Villanova. Also in the second, and Virginia maintains its field goal margin late first quarter there. William and Mary, Virginia Tech, no score. And Juan Bucknell leading Davidson by a touchdown in the first. 
Rudder under a lot of pressure. Down he goes at the 27-yard line. Frank Warren and James McKinney, the tackle and the safety, made the tackle. McKinney, number 13, coming off. The Auburn defense, tough again. They're playing very enthusiastic football, and that would give Johnny Majors a lot to think about, but they are very inspired, playing good defensive ball. Schneidman to kick again. Krebs is deep. Krebs is going to run this one back from the 24. Some pretty good moves to bring it out to the 36-yard line. And Schneidman, the punter, got down there to make the tackle. They spotted at the 37. Richmond out in front of Cincinnati in the second, leading by eight. Now Clemson has scored again, leading Villanova 28-0 in the third. 110 remaining here, first half. Auburn 16, Tennessee nothing. Tigers trying to get on the board again. Trotman, the quarterback. Brooks, the deep back. First man through, William Andrews, number 32. Plows forward for a yard, maybe two. It'll be second and eight. Noonan made the tackle. Of course, one week ago, right here in Birmingham, SC in Alabama. Trojans, upset victory. Highlights of that game will be our Fireman's Fun flashback at halftime today. Brooks. Takes it to the 41-yard line as the clock winds down. Auburn will now take a timeout. Or will they? Looks like Trotman was set to call time, and then Charlie said no. So they let the clock run down. Barfield will be content, apparently, with a 16-point lead at halftime. It's third down and six. Too much time as the flag goes down before the snap. That stops the clock with eight seconds. And as you look at the Auburn Brain Trust, hopefully we'll have a chance to get a word with Johnny Majors just prior to the start of the second half. Mike down on the sidelines, if Johnny will talk with us. <laughs> Coming back out of that locker room, I don't imagine it's going to be too pleasant in there. He's got a lot on his mind right now. Third down and 11. And this should be the final play of the half. Eight seconds left on the clock. Trotman to Bird and incomplete. And that eight up five seconds. So we've got three seconds remaining with Wilbur Jones covering on the play. The first half has belonged to the Tigers, who are going to make a lot of people in this area start believing in them, even the skeptics and the doubters. Right now, because granted, Auburn did not play any powerhouses in its first two games in Virginia Tech and Kansas State, but dominated both ball games. They have dominated the first half here, and they get to go home next week, meet Miami and Auburn. It's fourth down, but only three seconds left, so this will run out the clock. We've got a flag down, however, as Brooks carries to the 38-yard line. North made the tackle. Referee is holding the teams for the moment. We've got a flag down. Looked like Tennessee jumped off. Nope. We've got offsetting penalties, and that means the half is over. First half complete at Birmingham with Auburn dominating Tennessee 16 to nothing. Field in Birmingham, Alabama, and Auburn is out in front by a score of 16 to nothing. The Tigers dominating the first half. We mentioned James Brooks at the top of the show. You really have to be impressed with this fellow. A man who, uh, as we have told you a couple of times during the first half, alternated last year with Cribs. Got a chance to play quite a bit in the first two games because Cribs was hurt and has certainly shown his stuff. And Steve Davis, that 70-yard run was a thing of beauty. Yeah, it's been an interesting first half. And I think the neat thing about him, Auburn has been able to put both offense and defense together. They have not been able to do that in the past, but I think the first half really showed what Doug Barfield wanted, to both teams to play well together. And they have James Brooks, he said, very impressive. 
And Barfield uh, has to be very happy with his defense, too. Well, very much. They've uh, been able to make Tennessee go a long way. Tennessee is still burdened with the same problems. They've, they've not really had a good, cohesive uh, effort on offense, and uh, that was one of the things that Johnny Major said they've got to do. They've got to change things and start putting things together on, on defense and offense both. Last week, one of the big upsets of the season took place right here. Legion Field, Birmingham, Alabama. Highlights of the SC Alabama game. Our Fireman's Fund flashback brought to you by Fireman's Fund Insurance. And Fireman's Fund Insurance is brought to you by an independent agent near you. Last week, right here, SC against Alabama. Alabama coming in number one. Charles White had a great day, but a stuttering start on a drive in the first quarter. Paul McDonald gave it to White, but Charles fumbled at the two-yard line, and Murray Leg recovered, stopping that SC drive. However, they got the ball back in the first and ten from the Alabama 40-yard line. White through the right side, cuts back across the grain, goes in, untouched, breaking two tackles, touchdown, 7-0. They added a field goal, led 10-0 in the half. Then, third quarter, it was Charles White who gained 199 for the day, but he fumbles again here, and once more, it is Murray Legg recovering for Alabama. The Tide able to capitalize on that play. On the very next play, it's Major Ogilvy, a big hole through the line, out into the SC secondary, and into the end zone to make it 10-7. However, in the fourth quarter, SC came back, first and goal from the six-yard line. McDonald, the left-hander, found Kevin Williams, number eight, corner of the end zone to make it 17-7. Then, as Bear Bryant looked on, a bit disconsolately at this point, it was McDonald again, fourth quarter, and watch this catch by Kevin Williams. 40 yards, a touchdown to make it 24 to seven. Late in the game, Alabama able to score again. From the 41-yard line, it was Jeff Rutledge firing to Bart Kraut for the touchdown, but too little, too late, as SC wins it, upsetting Alabama. Bear Bryant trying to get things together today in Tuscaloosa against Vanderbilt. You know, for years, we burned in this symbol, the firehouse. Comfortable in Birmingham. We brought you up to date on the top ten. Now some other scores of interest, in particular in this area. Kentucky and Maryland, no score in the second quarter. The Tech, Georgia Tech, still leading the Citadel, 14 to nothing, no change there. Clemson has a four touchdown lead. Villanova, Virginia, first quarter, leading VMI, 3-0. Second quarter, William & Mary and Virginia Tech, no score. And Bucknell, ahead by seven, over Davidson, end of one. Richmond, an eight-point lead over Cincinnati in the second. The Auburn Band. last two football games. They need to get something on court, just like Johnny Major said. Auburn will kick off George Portella to put it in the air. Second half is underway. Malone at the goal line. 10. Down to the 15, and Auburn starts the second half the way they ended the first. Poor field position. 15 yards Tennessee. Tennessee, in its first two games, there's a flag down at the 12-yard line. In its first two games this season, the Vols had started 26 of 32 drives inside their own 20-yard line. We've got offsetting penalties on the run back. There is Streeter. So, indeed, he'll be able to play in the second half as he leads the Vols out on their first offensive series. First and 10 from the 15-yard line. With a bird cage calling the signals. The pitch back to Fox. Nothing doing. James McKinney, number 13. So it's second down and 13, and an inauspicious beginning of the second half for Tennessee. Tennessee's got to, excuse me, they've really got to watch themselves down here because they don't want to make a mistake. You got to be careful. Get everything together and then turn loose. Streeter 
near side complete to the 25 yard line and tackled is Jeff Moore at the 29 gray made the tackle Jerry Beasley number eight the left corner we'll see it again from the end zone Street is going to drop straight back Moore was shaken up in the first half but makes the catch here to start the third quarter Streeter again complete to Arbo Arbo goes back the other way and knocked down at the 48 yard line by James McKinney number 13 for a first down so Streeter indeed seems to be able to get something going at least at the outset now after the inauspicious beginning on the first play and Johnny Majors has some reason for optimism at the moment. He certainly does. I hope our microphone, is my microphone on? I believe you sure. Okay, I was off there a couple of plays. Glad to be back. <laughs> First down from the 48-yard line for Tennessee. Auburn ahead, 16 to nothing. Streeter keeps, loses the ball. Finch recovers for Tennessee, however, as they maintain possession back at the 44-yard line. Johnny Majors. I, mean, I was off with it. They had their two best plays. Tennessee be able to complete the pass. They've got to open up and do something. They've not thrown the ball very much in that first half, and uh, they've got to loosen up that Auburn defense. They're very stubborn up front. And they've got to do something to get them off their back and open up, and they've got better field position they've had all day. Second down and 14, Tennessee at the 44-yard line. Streeter over the middle to the 48-yard line to Finch. Streeter's pass complete to Finch. James McKinney made the tackle. It'll be third down, five and a half. They have shown a, a little bit more aggression on offense for the first time in the afternoon. They're really starting to take it to Auburn. I guess the main reason is because they got out of the hole and uh, had some field position on those two pass completions. Third and a long five. Good call. Kelsey Finch. Inside the 30 to the 28-yard line. Harris Rayburn made the tackle, and Frank Fox put down a good block. You might be able to see at the block. This is a good fake. It's a fake draw off the middle, and he'll go out to Finch, number 36 on the outside. Auburn's been really pinching in on the corners, and they've really not thrown outside very much, and that's why that play opened up. They're starting to spread it out a little bit more, make Auburn guess a little bit more. First down from the 28-yard line, and it's Fox in the 24. The senior from Knoxville, 5'10", 198 pounds, who picks up five. So it is second down, five. This is, of course, Tennessee's deepest penetration. They're pleased to be down in some territory and have yards behind them rather than in front of them. This drive started at the Tennessee 15. Pitch back to Fox. Got some room inside the 20, the 10, touchdown ball. Everybody was reading at Finch, and the pitch went to Fox. Jeff Moore sprung him with a block, and Tennessee gets on the board. Here we have a great shot of the backs. Fox, number 24, get the pitch. A good play by Streeter, and hey, everybody makes the right block. Jeff Moore gets the number two man, the man that has the pitch, and he walks in. Perfect execution of the option play, and that's what Johnny Major has been wanting all year the cohesiveness of the offense, and they got to drive. Alan Duncan with Billy Arbo to hold. Duncan's kick is up, and it is good. So Tennessee marches 85 yards in four minutes with the third quarter underway, 11-01 to play. It is now 16-7, Auburn. Owens Corning built these three houses at its... The Tennessee was in the, the whole first half. The Tigers' first offensive play of the half coming up. Andrews, William gets it out to the 22 forward progress. We'll net him a couple. Johnny Chavis made the stop. It'll be second down and eight from the 22-yard line. Auburn 16, Tennessee 7. Third 
quarter. Quarterback, Charlie Trotman, number six. James Brooks, deep back in the eye. Up back is William Andrews. Trotman. Stopped at the line of scrimmage. And Tennessee fired up defensively. Dennis Wolf has had a fine game from the right side. Senior from Gate City, Virginia. Craig Kluke helping out, number 44. And it's third down and eight. I don't think we'll be able to measure uh, after the end of this football game how important that long drive was. The defense had a chance to stand up and watch the offense take the ball and drive when everything was against them and then when they played poorly in the first half. And now the defense is showing the inspiration the offense displayed. Trying to get it back for the offense. Third down and eight at the 22-yard line. Trotman down the right sideline. It's intercepted at the 45-yard line by Roland James. And look at the balls coming off the bench with the cast to protect the thumb. It's James still able to pick off Trotman's pass near midfield. Back come the balls. And this whole game, the flow of it has changed. You've got to realize that Roland uh, James, who's going to intercept this pass, has got a pad up all of his arm, and he's going to pick this thing off right in front, really uses his bad arm, in fact, makes the interception, and that volunteer bench went crazy. First down, Tennessee from its own 49-yard line. Streeter, to put it up, has a man at the 21-yard line. No! Jeff Moore was there, but not in bounds. Jerry Beasley covered on the play. So Streeter went right for the kill and almost had him. That's uh, reminiscent of the Johnny Majors back at Pittsburgh when uh, he had the people that he had, Matt Cavanaugh and Tony Dorsett and that bunch, take advantage of a mistake on that offense and do it. Try to do something quick. Second down, 10, Tennessee from the 49-yard line. Streeter fumbles but falls on it. Lost nine, but keeps possession. Frank Warren, and it wrapped up. Had it been the first half out, probably they'd lost that fumble. Things have definitely changed. Football's a game of momentum, and this happens, and uh, of course, Johnny Major is probably just thrilled that it's happening right now. Third down, 18 from the 41. Auburn leads by nine. The figure's on Streeter. Jimmy back, has a man, the tight end Harper, 40-yard line, first down. Reggie Harper, sophomore from Hartsville, Tennessee. We have him isolated. Reggie Harper, Streeter drops straight back, and Harper's going to go down and across the middle behind those linebackers. Big size, good speed, 6'3", 220. A great play. Here's looking at Streeter dropping straight back. Remember, Harper, the linebacker, went straight down and then across, found the opening. Tennessee's on the march. That was a third and 18. Now it's first and 10 from the 39 of Auburn. Streeter the fake throws behind the intended receiver on the far side. Jeff Moore, 88. It'll be second down and 10. Streeter's come up with a big play when he's needed it thus far in the second half. I think in the first uh, couple of possessions that Tennessee has had, Jimmy Streeter showing the form that he had last season. There's the stats. He's 50% as a passer today, 109 yards, and that's a pleasant surprise. He has struggled thus far in the season until this second half of this game. Second and 10, Arbo and Moore are both wide to the right. Finch and Fox, the running backs. Straight drop back, flip out to Fox. And Frank gets to the 34-yard line. Mike McQuay, 52. He's been in on a lot of tackles today. Donnie Givens. It really is like, excuse me, it's really like a, a whole different football game because Tennessee was playing very conservative. A lot of it was field position, but they didn't have great field position on the long drive. And now they're playing just throwing the football on both sides, dropping back across the middle. A lot of different team we saw in the first half. Can't say enough about them. Third down six at the 34. Streeter pumping, keeping, first down inside the 25, lost the shoe, gets to the 17. Donnie Gibbons made the tackle. So again, on the third down play, Streeter passed for a first down on third and 18, and now runs out of his own shoe to get a first down on third and six. They called him a controlled scrambler, and this is what he's doing. He's 
I don't know if we're, whether he wanted to really throw the ball or not. He put the ball under his arm and showed that ability, that speed, 4-5 of the 40. And uh, lost the shoot, ran right out of his own feet. Once again, as Tennessee now has to take a timeout. Here he is. He's going to roll to his left. He pumps. Where does he lose his shoe? Let's see if he... There he's running. Let's see where he popped his shoe. Right about... There it goes. That's running out of football shoe is what that is. So Streeter gets reshot on the timeout. He's carried six times, 19 yards net. Another first down. Tennessee turning this one around. Trailing by nine, threatening. Down at the 18, a reminder coming up Monday. Dallas and Washington on Monday Night Football. The Redskins unbeaten under Jack Pardee. The Cowboys, three and one. A loss only to the Rams. Live, nine o'clock Eastern time over most of these ABC stations. 7.45 left, third quarter. Auburn 16, Tennessee seven. First down balls, 18 yard line. Yard gain, senior from Sheffield, Alabama, setting up a second down, seven. Well, Johnny Majors, and if you were with us at halftime, you heard Johnny tell us he didn't know if Streeter could play in the second half. Hmm. He has really played. <laughs> he ought to get hurt more often, or at least shook up a little bit more. He has played very well. Second and seven from the 15. Defense. That was a very good defensive football play. Uh, James McKinney, number 13, was the uh, strong safety, and he came inside. Here's Streeter. He's going to, it's just a counter option. He goes down the line, and everybody's covered. The secondary rotated its coverage, and also that's what freed uh, number 48, Charles Wood, to make the stick on Streeter. He couldn't pitch the ball. They were covered on the pitch. Third down, eight. Fox bumped down at the 14-yard line. So now it'll be fourth down, six. Of course, the field goal does him a lot of good here. Gets him within six points. And so Alan Duncan will come in to try to make it 16 to 10. That's right. Put the tee down about the 22-yard line. So a 32-yard attempt for Duncan. Son of a missionary, he spent most of his life in Kenya. The kick is up, and good! The Volunteers have scored 10 points in the third quarter, right back in it, six minutes to go in the period. Auburn leads by six. A lot of motor momentum game all the time, and uh, Tennessee uh, came out and said, we're not dead yet, and I think also Jimmy Streeter, what he did in the uh, first couple of drives in the second half has made all the difference in the world. A lot more enthusiasm on Tennessee. They were pretty dead in that first half. Full of life right now. The defense will try to hold the Tigers. That penalty moves it back to the 13-yard line, first down. Maybe Craig Pookie from Seattle. You know things have changed when uh, Mr. Brooks is not getting the yardage that he had in the first half. Brooks, 154 yards today to equal his entire figure for last season. He has 130 at this point, so he is 24 shy in just the third game of the season. And a marker down on the last play as you look at Brooks. Auburn's going to get a little help. So this will more than offset the clipping penalty called on the run back. Penalty against Tennessee. Personal foul. I didn't see. I guess so. <laughs> and that gives Auburn a first down at the 28-yard line. First down, Tigers. They lead by six. Takes it out to the 35-yard line. Chris Bolton, 61. Made the tackle. Gain of 
seven. Second down three from the 35. Five minutes, 25 seconds remaining. Third quarter, 16-10, Auburn. They send Bird wide to the right. Andrews, uh, first down to the Tigers have picked up back-to-back -back first downs as William carries out to the 42-yard line. Lee North made the tackle. I think what's happening more than anything, John Chavis is playing out of position, and uh, Mark Clement pretty much right now has been controlling, and that's what frees William uh, Andrews to make the play. You've got a nose guard that has not played there a lot, and uh, that's tough. And Mark Clemens is having a pretty good day at center blocking. North took Chavis' spot of the line. He made the tackle. Ball at the 42, first and 10, Auburn. Brooks puts his head down and works his way out for close to five to the 47. It's Lee North again, 73, making the stop. Johnny Major Lee, saw his club go into the locker room at the half, down by 16. And not at all fired up. A team that looked like a dead horse, and they have been anything but here in the second half. I wonder what the coach had to say. I would imagine Johnny Majors had something very <laughs> firm and very, he was very committed in his words, I would imagine. Second down five, probably couldn't have him walk back to Knoxville. <laughs> Brooks. He's got a first down to the Tennessee 45 yard line. Jim Scruton led the charge with a good block. Wilbur Jones in on the tackle, number seven. So Auburn moving. First down at the Tennessee 45-yard line. He's got 15 carries for 144 yards, and uh, he's getting close to his... Uh, game average of 156 yards. He's had a good day so far, James Brooks. First down at the 45, and as Trotman looks things over, he decides to take a timeout. Timeout called by the Tigers, their first of the second half. 3.35 to play, third quarter. Auburn with the ball leading 16-10 over Tennessee. Gain of four, they'll spot it down at the 41-yard line. Auburn second down and six. Bird, wide right. Andrew takes it down to the 37. So Auburn going to the basics. Try to pick up the yardage, it'll be third for two. It's Lee North from Atlanta making the tackle, the freshman. Update some of the activity in this area. Maryland leading Kentucky. 7-3 in the fourth. Tech still out in front of the Citadel by two touchdowns, third. Clemson had an easy time with going over today. 31 to nothing. Third down and two. Trotman will keep it. First down to the 30. Man has quick feet. Quick feet. It's an interesting call uh, to roll out. Here it is again to roll out on a third down and two. They've had a lot of been very effective up the middle, but of course you've got the option to run or throw. And, uh, he gets his first and ten. I guess the bottom line is whether you can get it or not. And he did. The MI leading Virginia in the third quarter now. William and Mary leading Tech by a deuce in the third. Here, first down ten from the 30-yard line. Brooks. Coming back this way. Hit down to the 25-yard line. There's a man who has a whole lot of traffic out in front of him. Still picks up five yards. Lee North again made the tackle. Number 73. Bucknell and Davidson deadlocked at the half. Richmond out in front of the Bearcats by seven. Eastern Kentucky leading Austin P by a touchdown at the half. It is second down, five. Trotman has a man. It's Andrews. Great catch. 17 yard line and a first down. The big blocking back has decent hands. First down, Auburn. Charlie Trotman just really has a good touch on this football. 
hits Andrews and watch the catch. One-handed, pulls it in, feet in, goes out of bounds. Good play, very well executed. Andrews got some hands on him. They say he's the best blocker in the Southeastern Conference. He might be a pretty good receiver, too. And a decent enough runner. First down at the 17-yard line. Krebs in the game at the tailback spot. Krebs gets the ball inside the 15, the 10, and Krebs spinning his way down to the 1. Joe Krebs for 16 yards. He needs a new shirt. First and goal. Black Duncan saved the touchdown. He had a knee strain at the beginning of the season, and uh, remember, he was the third best back in the Southeastern Conference last year. Just powers his way through. Gets a good stick there, but good running back. Lost his jersey, had to go out of bounds, get another one. He's carried seven times for 44 yards, and Auburn will take a timeout here, so they have used yet another. The second timeout they have utilized in the third quarter, giving them only one remaining for the half, which might be interesting if it's close at the end. That'll stop it with 112 remaining in the third quarter. Auburn out in front 16 to 10, so the momentum shifting back to the Tigers on this drive. This is the best way for Auburn to uh, kind of uh, calm down, settle down Tennessee's enthusiasm, take the ball a long way, take a lot of time, and uh, kind of try to inflate a little bit of that enthusiasm they've got right now. And this is the best way to do it, take up the length of the field on them, and take a lot of time. First and goal from the one when Tom is back in. Auburn leading by six. Trotman trying to culminate a long drive. Joe Krebs for the touchdown. and into the end zone from the one. Joe Cribbs, uh, a lot of good blocking on that front line. Euchre and Stevenson to Clement all pretty much uh, powered him. Here's a different angle. He gets a good block. Uh, Keith Hickle, uh, Euchre, uh, oh, can't even read my own notes. Euchre, pardon me. The mom and dad probably watching and saying, my goodness, can it boy introduce that kid right? So is Bob Euchre. <laughs> <laughs> Keith Euchre. <laughs> Cribbs going in for the score. It's now 22 to 10. And they're going to go for two. Leading by 12. They'll try to stretch it to 14. And we've got flags. And a delay of the game against Auburn. So let's see if that does anything to the strategy of Doug Barfield. Of course, when you lead by 12, it really does behoove you to go for two. Yeah, it does. You what you do, you make them go for two touchdowns. So this time, they're still going for it. Much more difficult to go for two. Tennessee will now take a timeout. Some confusion in the Tennessee defense. That cost them a timeout. Both teams have used two of their three timeouts already. The third quarter is still not over. A reminder coming up next, ABC's Wide World of Sports, the U.S. Gymnastics World Team Trials. And we've got an outstanding team, both men and women. You'll see Kurt Thomas, Bart Connor, Kathy Johnson, and also pool champion trick shot wizardry, an event you've enjoyed before on Wide World of Sports. Willie Moscone and Minnesota Fats participating in that one. The scheduled Silverstone 150 Indianapolis car race from England was rained out. So gymnastics and trick shot wizardry from the pool table coming up next on Wide World of Sports. Auburn leading 22-10. Tennessee has just taken a timeout. Auburn attempting to convert. Moorhead State leading Murray State by four. South Carolina State has a nine-point lead in the third. Tennessee State a four-point lead at halftime. This the conversion now after the penalty from the eight yard line. Trotman going for the two pointer. It's tipped up in the air and nearly caught, but drops incomplete. So they're unsuccessful and still lead by 12. Dick Haley was the 
intended receiver, the son of the Auburn athletic director. Here we are, they're going for two points. Uh, Charlie Traub and Rose is right. Haley will be the intended receiver. And the ball's tipped up, and he still almost makes it. Still almost makes the catch. Here's another viewpoint of it. Trotman looking for Haley, two-point conversion. He's tipped up in the air a lot. He almost caught that football. Craig Pookie, man who got his hand on it. And so it's 22 to 10 Auburn with Portella to kick off for the Tigers. Moore and Malone. Back deep for Tennessee. Malone from the goal line. 10. 20. Out to the 23-yard line. Chuck Schechter made the tackle. Barfield has to be a little bit concerned now the way Tennessee's moving the ball. What Tennessee's doing with their both receivers, Reggie Harper, the tight end, and Jeff Moore, the split end, they're going outside, taking people away, or taking them across in the, in the crossing route, and then causing those backs to be uh, in an area where they can have the ball dropped off to them. There's the third quarter ended. Time has run out. Third quarter goes into the books at Legion Field in Birmingham. It's Auburn 22, Tennessee 10, and we'll be right back after this commercial and a word from our local stations. Who popped Streeter as he attempted to pitch it away. Third down and 22 at the 43-yard line. Streeter throws low, incomplete. Intended for Simpson at the 49. So the punting unit with Schneidman coming in, and Cribs will drop back deep for Auburn. Cribs from the 16. 20. Tripped up. Out to the 27-yard line. So the Tigers have it back. They'll start from the 27. We're in the first minute of the fourth quarter, and Auburn leads by a dozen. The first thing you notice about the big shaver. The second down, four. Chris Bolton, linebacker. Bird wide left. Franklin goes wide to the right. It is second down four. Trotman rolling, throwing, and nearly picked off. Knocked down at the 37-yard line by Spradlin. Take one way and roll back to his right. He's a sprint out passer. Danny Spradling, number 50. Second team linebacker almost had a surprise. He was in the right place. Usually it surprises you when the ball comes right at you and there's no one around you. It hits you in the hands and you're just so surprised. And yet they practice on it for, for hours in practice. Third and four. Slip out to Cribs. Has the first down. To the 44 yard line goes Joe Cribs. Ed Dubos, a good block to spring him. Tackle made by Spradlin. Here's a ground level shot. Excuse me. Yeah, you know, he rolls out. You really don't think there's very much there from the perspective that we had, and then all of a sudden he makes yardage on it. There were a lot of people on that left side, and Joe Cribs shows us the form that he enjoyed so much last year. Huh. Auburn, first down 10 from the 44-yard line. Clock running, 13 minutes to play in the game. Auburn leading Tennessee 22 to 10. Trotman gets hit, loses the ball, and it, they rule it an incomplete pass. Arm was coming forward as he got hit. So incomplete. Trotman is now four out of nine for 73 yards. Let's see if he's going forward. If he makes any shoulder rotation, yeah, it's going forward. 
the just did. There's the ball popped loose. Be incomplete pass. Anytime he's got shoulder rotation or his arm is following through, going forward, that's uh, going to be a pass. And whether it's complete or incomplete is we'll make the decision on. Second down, ten from the 44-yard line. Trotman pitches away to Cribs. Out of bounds at the 47-yard line. This program is being brought to you as a special exclusive of ABC Sports. Let's pause five seconds to allow our local stations to identify themselves. WKAB TV 32, Montgomery, Alabama. <laughs> Barfield, his team 2-0 coming in, leading by 12 here. 12 minutes, 40 seconds remaining. Third down, eight. Auburn from the Tiger 46. Probably gonna throw the ball. Got to. Well, that's what I know. Well, try Cribs. And he's got the first. Down to the 44, where Wilbur Jones makes the tackle. It's amazing. Third down, eight and a half, and you run the sprint draw play, and you make it. Keep them guessing. There are the figures through three. Tennis one-sided for Auburn. Oh, yeah. Tennessee had, uh, in the third quarter, more statistics running and throwing the ball in the head in the entire first half of the football game. They had 159 uh, total yards in the third quarter, and the balance of that was what they got in the first half. First and ten from the Tennessee 44. Trotman, the pitch back to Cribs. No room this time to play very slow in developing. And he's dropped for a loss back to the 46-yard line. Roland James coming up from the corner. It'll be second down 12. Auburn home next week against Miami. Tennessee back home next week against Army. How many thousand will be in Knoxville? 80-something, as usual. They pack them in in Knoxville. Figures on Cribs, averaging five yards a carry. Second down, 12. Auburn at the Volunteer 46. Complete to the 30-yard line and inside the 25 goes Byron Franklin for a first down to the 22. Byron Franklin, a sophomore from Sheffield, Alabama. Boy, the Auburn team is really young. They're good and young and probably going to get better the next couple of seasons. Charlie just dropped straight back, and boy, it's just right down. There's a seam in there, and Byron Franklin hit it, and boy, he's fast. He's a sprinter on the Auburn track team, and he's dangerous to get the football to. First down of the 22. Auburn driving again. Cribs on a sweep to the left. Down he goes. Back of the line of scrimmage at the 26-yard line. Jersey and all. Wilbur Jones coming up from the secondary. It's kind of a cross buck, misdirection type play. Cribs on the outside, and the jersey goes, but he doesn't go down by that tackle. Dennis Wolf, 34, was the man who was responsible for the tackle. He's had a good day. Second down. 14. Trotman complete to Franklin 10 yard line. Byron Franklin makes his second catch on this drive and the Tigers marching again. Charlie Trotman's throwing the ball very good on this drive and hits Franklin on the just the out route. It's one on one coverage. You're by yourself and he couldn't quite turn it up the sidelines. But another big play in a first and 10. Franklin has caught three for 90 yards. So it's first and 10 from just outside the 10. And it's Brooks getting to the five. James Brooks takes it halfway to the goal line as Craig Pukey comes in to make the stop. Ball spotted just inside the five. Second down. They could conceivably pick up a first down without getting the touchdown, though it's not likely. Second down. Brooks again. Through the middle to the three. So again, the Tennessee defense, as they have done all day long, able to stiffen when Auburn takes it down deep. Chavis made the play, and it's third down. 
and two and a half for the first down and two and three quarters for the touchdown. And with that rush there, James Brooks has eclipsed his total yardage, gained all of 77 in just two games plus three periods and six minutes. So in less than three games, Brooks has eclipsed last year's mark. Auburn will now take a timeout. Tigers want to talk it over. Trotman a bit frustrated at this point. They're out of timeouts. We have 9-12 to go in the game, and Auburn leads by 12. Third down, you can see by the marker, they can pick up a first down without the touchdown. But in essence here, it's third and goal. This close. Trotman asks for some quiet. And then gives the ball to Krebs. And Krebs goes in for the score. Auburn called its last timeout to set up this play. And he goes in. Krebs has scored twice. This is a straight ahead power play. He's got his leading blocker, William Andrews, blowing through the hole. And he gives it one foot, kind of jumps over and bounces. That's a great back because you hit, you roll, and you keep going forward. Coaches love to see that. It's Auburn now by 18. Portello will try to make it 19. Christie to hold. George's kick is good. And so the Tigers, who saw a 16 to nothing lead, become 16 to 10 rapidly early in the third, have bounced back to score twice on their last two possessions. And now lead 29 to 10. 